Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Uh, well, to my new channel, Creativity Inc. I've na renamed the channel uh, Forget Creativity, uh, Creative Creativity. But uh, as you guys know, I start my videos with my purchase from the flea market over the weekend. And uh, this weekend I got some scissors and a little uh, bit, uh, drill bit uh, thing. But I think I like it for a scissor stand. And I'm gonna, um, this is the, my other sister that I got over last weekend, so now I can journal those two as well. And today I wanted to start, um, I wanted to make a video about uh, this Tim Holtz um, paper, I think it's called Abandoned. And I've made uh, some uh, little Polaroid looking things, but I put, instead of a picture, I put a an art piece in it. So I love, 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 love this uh, Tim Holtz paper. So I wanted to um, use it as inspiration for my little Polaroid art. So I'm calling them poly arts. Um, if there's other name for them, you know, I, you know, comment down below so I know. But for me, for right now, as f in me, I know I call them Polaroid or poly arts. And um, I'm gonna start with all these colors. I don't necessarily use the same ones. Um, I kind of just use what I mimic and these are all I believe you can find all these at Walmart and um, if not um, no I actually believe these are all Walmart's and Michaels and um, I start with I shape I put a square of kind of what I want to kind of um, use as a guide to where I want to I'm gonna cut it later and I want to I want I use it as I make a guide so I kind of stick to it but in reality, you know, it's a crop of the pool picture. So at the end of the day, whatever you get in it, you get in there, right? So <clears throat> because the picture on the on the Tim Holtz inspiration paper is square and my picture on the poly art is going to be rectangle. So I got to, in my head, I got to kind of see where I want to crop it and where I want to draw and what I want to design I don't really usually end up doing what I say I am so you guys do as I say not as I do okay because I mess things up left and right so I start off by my basics so I noticed that in the background of my paper there's a yellow so I kind of do like a mustard and a kind of like an off-white kind of thing beige and I kind of mix that up. I you guys you guys can't see it on the screen, but I do the mustard first and then the light beige so you guys can see there's little lines. The paper, if you get up close to it, it looks it wants to give you that texture of like that uh corduroy, I think that's how you say it. You know me and my my accent. So it gives you a textile um texture. So I kind of wanted to make make that all the way from the bottom. And at the end of the day, it's just an inspiration. Um, I love the colors. I love what he did with this design. So um, I'm out there just to kind of, um, if anything, bring this piece of art even more. Uh, just because I'm only focusing on that piece of art and not making something else out of it. But it is my main focus on my piece as well. So um, it's an homage to this um paper that i so lo loved i don't use it um as much as i want to because they don't i don't know they, i think they stopped making it and then they did and then i don't know i just don't want to take the risk of me like needing it and not having it so sometimes you know i get bored and i look at it <laughs> i don't know i really love this paper but uh, as you guys can tell i try to mimic the texture on the on the inspiration paper so I use a lot of my fingers because it's like smudgy and then I also use a lot of my brush so it gives you that textile mixture so I go back and forth between both of the of the textures so um, so far so kind of good but I look at it and you guys don't see me off screen but I looked at it and I looked at it and I was like okay okay and then I decided I'm going to go to the stamp. I noticed that most of the papers that he's using, um, he uses like his own stamps and his own stencils. So um, that was easy for me because I, I have a, a few of his stencils. And 
luckily I had this stencil to to use for this paper so um, I I used also the stamp that comes um, I think with uh, I don't remember I have them kind of like hanging out everywhere and I don't have them like really organized so I don't remember the pack this one came in but this one's also a Tim Holtz stamp and it looks a lot like the one that is actually on the paper it might be it but since it's kind of like you know uh, stressed and painted and stuff like that I um, I'm not too sure about it so I try to mimic it as much I noticed that mine stamp is a little too um, dark but um, I go at it with the inks again with my paints so it di it dissipates a little bit now I can sit here and kind of draw the whole um, same word same sentence but in reality I just want to get the gif of it or the not the gif but like you know like a resemblance of it so I don't do the C and I go ba I go on the on the mason R I don't put like the whole thing and I grabbed another one of the staples I mean staples <laughs> stamps that say Paris the um, inspiration paper says Paris something and a number and this uh, stamp had Paris something and a number two so I figure it's close enough so I used it now um, like I said do as I do as I say not as I do because in reality I wished I would have done this writing a little bit more higher because I'm gonna end up cutting it I know it sucks but um, it doesn't look that bad and at the end of the day it's an inspiration clipping of the original right so um but you know if I would have really followed the line or the the guides that I supposedly do for myself so that I wouldn't go through this um I would have kind of like moved it up a little bit even if it cut up the word but I feel like I cut it too much I don't know but as you can see I'm missing purple so I'm gonna go back with one of my purples and if you guys I mean in in real life you really can't see that much of a difference but in the screen you can see it more it's more of a like a br brilliant br um, purplish but in my eyes is close enough and it's like I said it's just an inspiration of colors and and texture movement so I was pretty happy with it um, I've I, I have done about I think nine, eight or nine of these papers. I don't know if I'm going to do all of them, um, but I am planning on doing more of these. I do have a, a YouTube video of me showing you the the other Polaroid um, poly arts that I have done with other papers. I will uh, flip through um, through them a little bit to, uh, after this at the end of this video. But um, there is a comprehensive or in-depth um, video towards the beginning of uh, when I started my channel of how, not how, but um, the other ones that I have done. And I put it next to, next to the paper or next to the inspiration paper that I have done, um, that I used the inspiration from. So if you guys are interested, I will link the video up on the index card in the corner of this clip. And um, if I remember, because I always say I'm going to do something and then I forget. If I remember, then I'll also link it down below. But it is also uh, in my YouTube uh, history of the videos. And so, anyways, um, back to the video at hand. So, I go back again because I feel like now I'm missing. I put so much blues and yellows again that now I feel like I was missing that yellowy. Not yellow. I don't know. It's like mustard, but it's not mustard. You guys know what I mean. Um, and I should know the colors. I use this color a lot. Um, but anyways, so I'm gonna cut the the um, the size that I need. That is gonna go on the Polaroid piece of paper that I've already pre-cut, and I pretty much cut it. But I want to be as clean as possible and as um, what do you say? Keeping in mind that I'm keeping those little things that I cut off the um, the sides, I keep them because I use 
other, I make other Polaroid arts out of these. So I want to be clean about how I cut it. And I want to be um, care thinking in mind how, if I were to cut the bottom part of this Polaroid piece that I have in my hand right now, on the bottom first, it would have been difficult for me to later do the art piece. I don't know if you guys know what I mean. But um, you guys, I guess I will have to do another video about this and, um, and, and show you guys what I mean by me doing another piece and of the remnants. But I don't have enough, so this is a, I'm going to have to do like two or three because I, I mix up the, the little re remnants of, of these pieces. And I'm going to show you guys later, but you, can, you guys can also see it on the other video up close um, pictures of them I think I think I don't know it was like in February so like I forgot what I did yesterday so I forgot what I did on that video I know it's a big problem with me but um you see how I wish the word was just a tad bit more up like I don't mind it cutting it but I think it cut too much anyway so I did this fit this um like a like a Polaroid album but at first I was like, oh, you know what, I'm going to be kind of simple and like clean about this one. But I like the cover and then I had to break the cover, right? And then I was like, I'm going to use my cans to make, um, out of the cans that I do, the art pieces or I don't know what you would call it. Like the things that I do out of can, um, can sodas or rockstar sodas or cans. Anyways, drinking cans. Um... I've made these hinges out of soda can and I've also made those um, those like little pieces that hold my my paper onto the, the spine every every spine wire that you guys see there is holding three pieces of paper it's not a signature because it's one paper at a time anyways you guys pay attention to this I use the crackle paint under crackle media and you guys will see this was an experiment of mine well I've done it before but when I first discovered it it was an experiment I thought it was not gonna work I thought it was just gonna be like like just a dumb silly thing but guys it's magic Ready for the results? Ta da! Sound neat. I used uh, crack paint before, under this, and you guys can see in the corner. When I did it in the corner, there is no crack medium under in between it. I mean, in, under that crack. Okay. Under the crack medium, I didn't put crack paint, crackle paint, so there is the crackles are not as big. I mean, it's still cracked, but not as big. But there's a problem, there's a downside to this madness. The cracks are so cracked, they're falling off. So, the trick that I found easy for um, for me to make it uh, strong and for them not to fall off, because some of the big chunky pieces will fall off. So, the big ones that I can see, I just pick them up and I'll just put a dab of glue on there. Um, I checked on the big ones mostly and then I just put a piece of glue then I did this concatenation or this little thing where I put a little bit of water in my case coffee water and I put glue and I put paint so I'm painting and gluing and reinforcing my whole crackle at the same time because um, if you don't reinforce it somehow um, even the pieces that right now, even though I touched them all right now and they're all kind of like there, they will fall off because it's just a little piece of floating paint on um, the crackle paint that I put under this crackle paste. Um, kind of rejects the paint and that's why it cracks. So if I don't put glue on it, it's going to reject it eventually. And then I'm going to have some weird looking journal 
later on when I'm trying to create something nice. Now, this is, the, I feel like this journal is still missing more than what I'm doing now. But that's because my whole intention when I first started the journal was, I don't know, I wanted a clean journal. Because I wanted it to be just like a little simple mini Polaroid piece of journal. <laughs> but it didn't work out that way. I will eventually get there. Um, I always tend to super grunge everything and if, and I don't like it. I want to work on being a different kind of techniques, you know, I want to evolve into being able to make different, not just stick to one. And I don't want to be just grungy, grungy, grungy all the time, you know, so I wanted to do something clean, but I guess my artistic head is not ready for it because it came out. <laughs> I think it's the grungiest thing I've ever made. <laughs> but that's how it goes, right, people? So, um, I do this on both sides. This back side is not as cracked as the other one. But just to make sure, I still do the glue, the water, and the paint. And um, make sure you tack it in there really well. Because at the end of the day, you want this glue and water and paint to kind of go under the cracks so that it's holding on to there and so now I'm attempting to uh, make like if it was a piece of wood like a driftwood but um, I changed my colors but just so you guys don't like write these down I do the gray and I start with my base I when I paint I start from the bottom up so I did use a dark wood because it's a is an old piece of wood and so I want to emphasize that it's old, so I start with my brown. Even if at the end of the day I don't see it as much, uh, the feel and you know some of the colors will come through and and um, and show. But I work from the I know, and it makes for me it makes like sense that I'm working. I gotta say okay, I'm gonna work from my base up, from like the bottom up. But I mean, what other way would you work, right? <laughs> Anywho, um, I gotta just say that to myself. So if I sound silly, um, that's just how I have to work in my head. Okay, so my base is a driftwood, right? And then that driftwood is going to have some moss. And so that's kind of how I decided to put the gray. And then while I was there, I decided to um, put gray on all the edges of that my, my book so that... Um, the inside starts kind of matching the outside because the inside was kind of clean. Um, so once I put my water and I mean my light, my dark gray, I go and do the same thing with my lighter gray. For my next color, I'm using this color, I think it's called Caramel, but when I apply it, it looks orange. It's, I, I mean, I'm guessing it's because it's some kind of thing having to do with the other colors that I've applied to the, to the board, but I felt it, it was too orangey. So the other color, that Pueblo color that was on my desk. I was like, if this looks orangey, that's gonna definitely look orangey. So that's why the other color that's there, I didn't use. So I, you know, I had started it, so I'm gonna just go along with it and apply this color um, to the to the piece of wood. At the end of the day, you want to have depthness. You don't want to go crazy either, but you want to have depthness in your uh, journal, and you want to go by different colors and feelings of it so I go and I use some of my paper and don't never forget your edges edges um, kind of surround your journal and so yep I'm using blue now um, this blue is uh, just some colors that I threw together that my bottles were kind of like 
empty so I just decided to just throw them on there because I wanted to make space for other colors so I grabbed all my remnants of blues and I think it was a little bit of uh, black but um, I was just playing with it I don't brush it on because I want to create that texture that um, that little rubber spatula creates um, I made this little I put a handle actually this handle of this spatula is legs for a couch so don't judge me but that's what it is um, so anyways the I put the blue and I put it don't forget to put some on the middle because you don't want it to look like I don't know it was blopped on there so you want to include everything including the spine the spine um, I it was even though it's aluminum can um, because of the crackle paste it's it kind of is serving as a kind of like a primer so all this paint is staying on there and, it, and I've you know I've been played with this journal and it nothing has flaked off or anything I used a little aqua and then I used coffee water now if you guys notice because some of that uh, crackle paint that I put under the crackle paste was still there um, when I poured in the coffee water it made some of the paint come off and it looks so cool um, I'll show you guys this close up right now but because I noticed it was doing that I poured in more so um, this is me playing with the coffee water in my journal um, as I was playing with that little uh, resist it's kind of like a resist but it's not resisting it it's actually just kind of like I don't know if maybe the word is reject but at the same time it's cracking it so that I know that resist like makes the paint kind of like go off to the side or doesn't let it be there at all but the resist this this kind of like lets it sit there um, but cracks it up I don't know I don't know what it I am mean, saying but I think you guys know what I mean uh, I see a lot of talent out there and I'm just showing you my crazy side of this world so I make sure I go back with that same green that I did at the beginning and I bring it back out again um, because I love the green I think I didn't want it to be mossy um, but when I was doing the grays and then the green kind of like I was like okay it's gonna be driftwood with moss but then it wasn't that <laughs> it was this so um, it no longer feels like it was a piece of driftwood so anyway so I go back and make sure I do all my edges so that it doesn't look like I blocked some paint on top of it it actually you know it involves all of it and this is me um, distressing my edges coffee water and black paint um, you guys see the close-up um, you guys can see that it, I the, some of that brown is where that there was still resist and um, it resisted the blue and I loved it I love that it did that so you know learn from my mistakes but you know do it on purpose don't make it a mistake like I did. And so I go back with my brown, not brown, wall, coffee water, and black. And I just go around the edges, and I put some here, some there, some everywhere. And um, to enhance the crack, the paint, um, I cracked. This is a this covers our plywood, so I I um I made cracks on it just because why not? And I think that's where my whole a uh, mess up started where me attempting to do a clean journal but then I have these awesome cracks cracks on them it was just calling out for grunginess right I don't know you guys know what I mean right so I went even grungier than I wanted to so the cool the cool thing about this um, technique of wa coffee water and black paint is that you can go over and over again and make some areas lighter and some areas darker and uh, make it run make it not run make it you know you can there's so much play rather than just like um, 
I don't know. I don't know. There's I've I've done many kinds of ways of ranging air um my uh, my edges and by far this is my one of my favorite ways to grunge up um my end uh, at the end of the of my make you know um usually you you want to grunge it up or give it that last touch and this is my end my last touch is to grunge up the the edges and yes i'm gonna go back with brand green again so it's just because See, I'm trying to get away from my my stuff being so dark. So, I put so much black on it that I darkened it. So, I just want to go back and just put a little bit of highlights like on the screws and on the little thing. I know you guys think I'm crazy, but it works, works in my brain. It makes me happy. And so, when I look at it, it makes me happy. And, um, I don't know. I hope it makes you happy, too. I um I love texture. I love touching it and um it makes me feel like I don't know, maybe this one feels like in the bark. But anyways, this is another crazy idea, guys. I grabbed this strip of can um paper. I'm going to call it can papers cuz you know I make like you flatten out the can and it just becomes like a paper, right? So I'm going to call it can paper. Um and I had this Dymo like little labeler and it worked my husband was like dude it's not gonna work i was like dude it is and he was like you're crazy baby and i was like i know when it worked he was like he was happy for me but at the end of the day he was like i can't believe you're that crazy so it worked i'm so excited that i now have a labeler now i took this thing apart because i didn't know how i was putting it in so now I know it works fine. It works great. Uh, in this Dymo, um, I had to hold the press like halfway so that my I look, my um, my little can paper strip would go through. I don't know if you guys have those older ones or or the newer ones how they would be loading, but mine loaded that way. And um, you know, just sharing how mine loaded the aluminum um, strip paper. And so I'm going to now look for um, screws because those eyelids, uh, they're not long enough to go through the plywood. Uh, so I have to get some screws now. I haven't gone to my regular screw store that I usually go to. So I have the, well, not that I don't want to. Uh, I go to this one crazy store where they have like, I don't know millions of screws and you pick your size the color the head I mean you pick everything um, and so I haven't gone because it's been closed lately so I'm stuck with these screws that are a little bigger than I wanted to but you know you gotta do what you have so because I don't want to pull out my drill bit I use a screw that has a, a self tap tip and I use that as my bit. So I just grab my screwdriver. And um, I make the hole. And by the way, you see why my, my hand is like so close to the camera? That's why I was so happy I found that little screw. Because now I can, a little screwdriver, now I don't have to like look, do that. Like almost, look at my hand almost covers the whole screen. That's crazy, man. So... Um, while I'm making the hole without pulling on my drill, I make, um, I, 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 I'm using the self-tap screw and this is how it ended. The, oh, by the way, if you guys can't see the little strips is mended. And on this little strip, I put the year 2020 because I already have my labelers maker, my makers labeler, my, wait, what do I call it? Um, uh, makers label. So I have a signature. I also wanted to put the date on a separate label. I don't know. I'm going crazy on the label thing. But um, this is it. And so I'm going to. My new one uh, that I just made. I'm going to put it right here. And see how the pages are kind of like clean. But I don't know. I shouldn't have been so clean in the inside. I think at some point I might end up grudging them. It's just step by step. So on the back, 
I put more pieces of paper. I had another idea planned for the back, but I, at the end of the day, I started with that. And see, those are the bits, the snippets that I use save from the other um, polar poly arts. So in the front, I wanted to have a way to store my, <coughs> excuse me, my little snippets or other leftovers. There's my signature. Um, labelers maker makers labeler what do I keep on saying it backwards and this is it so on the other video that I have um, I have a close-up of the the one that I made the poly art and the actual paper the inspiration came from and these are leftovers see how cool they look I almost like them more but no I like the papers better. so these are the poly Polaroids or Polaroid or poly art that I made and I put I ended up putting this envelope And this is it guys. Thank you guys for watching Thank you guys for subscribing. Thank you guys for watching all of my videos my craziness I appreciate you guys joining me on my new um, Channel name <laughs> creativity. Let me know what you guys think. Have a good day